It just did dear. Some go expire. Yeah. Some go expire. You don't go even know saying don't expire until when you use them. The first is only the cake for your face. It has already been done. <laughs>
Do you understand? So you, you have to just that thing happened happen in um, Benita. I I'm sorry, what's her name? Um, this girl said, um, um, my Daila. roommate, Daila. Daila. I told her, please go and tell everybody, like, warn everybody. If it's Same your turn, make sure you clean up. And then people that keep plates, see, maybe kitchen. like, no, no. once it's 10 p.m. or 9 p.m., if you eat, wash your dishes. Because I cannot come and clean the, uh, I can't clean, clean the kitchen and then leave it and go. Especially that the people coming the next morning are coming to meet a clean kitchen. And they are coming to meet that because some, some people are with their blockheads. They will come in tough one, two, and come and eat and leave it there. Then they are chasing the next week. Yes, they are. Do you understand? It's not, it, yeah, I have you seen the kitchen? Because it's me that will sit in the wall. So it. please, uh, you have to. Uh, so have, after, after the that, shoot, this, this, this morning, morning. After you have to tell them. Some people that don't know how to clean our wall. All of you that have blockhead in this house. All of you that have one belly head. Hello, partner. Why are you looking like me this morning? No, you're you not. You said you get blockhead now. Why is your head you blocked? Like it's your head that is blocked. It's your, it's your head blocked. It's block. two of your head that is blocked. All of you that have blockhead in this house. Your mind will not touch down. I'm a certified blockhead. It's your head that is the real blockhead. I'm a certified blockhead. That you not clean the kitchen clean enough to tear the block. Uh, now why should not talk now? <laughs> in the kitchen we're in the That they need to... What, if you see the kitchen, mm. the fear will catch you. Now why should not talk? I don't watch them for yesterday. Now why should not talk? Like why you not talk? Mm. Day before yesterday people play. Now me wash them. Ask fast now, now, I call call pot, the, everything. Now me wash them. Now why you you do tits for time? Eh, before uh, I go. No. Everybody, made everybody they show wiseness now. <laughs> Now set. Only one. Only one. Share for the remaining ones. So the remaining ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Guys, you know me better than this. This house is so bad for guys. That's the thing. Only come up for one place. I stay for one place. Tonight, nobody should use the toilet on tonight. That's yes, yes. We put farm for it to dry. It's a miracle. We put farm for it to dry. It's a miracle. So, nobody should enter. Let's not put the fan at the door. Nobody should enter. Okay. Thank God. You finish it. Don't worry about it. It's a sign that we can be. Eh, no. A Tell me again. good friend, uh -huh. we become good partners uh -huh. in a business, uh -huh. good family, no, good friend, yes. friend with fully, yes. Eva, yes. everybody. You are lucky. Uh -huh. You are very, very lucky. Uh -uh, yes, My good. crocs would have touched you this morning. I'm very sorry. Good couples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I beg you, I beg. I beg, I beg. Good couple, but we are to No. Couple, but we are to Couples are going to attend this um, Couples wedding now. Which couples wedding? Only and the uh, blessing now. <laughs> ah, it's not our own. Why do you like this now? Yes, I do. Hey, well. <laughs> <laughs> the queen wants to be the con corner. You, you that deceived me to spill blood. You, you uh, deceived the queen to spill blood. Uh, uh, it is not my fault, but my queen. But for 24 bars of gold. <laughs> nah, don't, has... don't you see how I'm dripping? Yeah, it is. Is it easy to. Mazina, the con corner does not have big belly. Short, pull it. Okonkwa now is dripping. All this is the kingdom money, pull it. <laughs> They say, we all have a monster lurking inside us. We often ask, is there something evil inside of us, quietly biding? It's time and waiting for the chance to escape and trash out at the world around us. Around us? Question mark. Is there a monster eating away moments of my life, making me freeze like a block of ice? creeping up from somewhere inside of my mind and well completely taking over, we ask ourselves, gangmates, you are to create a spoken word poetry titled The Monster Within. This is an individual tax and gangmates expects, and gangmaster expects you to channel your inner creativity and bring the monster in you to life through spoken word poetry. poetry. You have three hours to prepare for this task. Note, each gangmate will be given 15 minutes for the presentation. Remember, this is a spoken word poetry. No, old, no holding of notes when presenting. <laughs> <laughs> Dad.
dark part of me. Mm -hmm. Very dark part of me. That's the monster within me. With, 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 with a little yellow part, well, you can say you have reached there. No, 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 I'm going to turn it on. The face. The face. Torture. Torture. Pressure. What are we doing? I will tell my secret. I will tell my secret to be It's part of it. What is it? Tears, fears, sorrows, prayers, voices. I hear voices, so many voices and so many words, yet unreasonable sentences altogether. Close to a burdened heart is uncertainty. And these are questions that are asked. Questions like why, and where, and what, and how, and when. And I, I keep thinking, this pens back to the voices. Think about it. Sorrows, I repeat, sorrows and prayers. I feel everything down here. It comes in so fast like a thief that it's crawling at night to get what exactly it wants. Sorrows. And again, I begin to think, what exactly am I to do? How exactly am I to do this? And it keeps saying, work. This voice keeps saying, harder, work, and push until something happens. What exactly? How will it happen? And what if it's not exactly what I am thinking? What if it's not exactly what I assume? Yes, they say daydreams. Don't quit your daydreams. It is not big enough if it doesn't scare the hell out of you. And again it says, work and think and dream. I have been dreaming and dreaming and dreaming and these voices keep telling me, is it going to happen ever? And it's all here, in my head. And I'm still thinking, and I'm still wondering, and I'm still hoping. <sighs> Fears. It comes in so briefly and it makes me feel so strange. And everybody around me starts to fear and tremble at the feel of myself. I fear myself. You all fear myself. I fear the feel of myself. When these voices come, I begin to ask questions. Who? Who is this? Who exactly is speaking? And then he takes me to a door and I go knock, knock, knock. 
Who are you? What are you? What exactly are you? What do you want? And then it takes me back to dreams, think, sorrows, dreams. And I go again, knock, knock. Who are you inside? Could anybody be home? It is so difficult. Dreams. Working towards them. Dreams. But the fear of not accomplishing would never let me. Dreams. <laughs> what if my trial goes in vain? Dreams. Prayers. Will it work? Yes, of course I have a creator, but will it work? Do I serve enough to let everything I am working for, would it work? Dreams. <laughs> this voice, when would you let me be? Should I keep striving? Should I keep working? Because I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to think about, but dreams. Nothing burdens me more than dreams. Fears of unaccomplished dreams. And my dreams are so big and so beautiful like a sunflower that has been watered and set. And my dreams are so big and wonderful that I see myself flying through the tallest of mountains, going through the highest of clouds, walking to the stars, gazing, staring. But dreams, do they come true? These are my fears. And he calls upon me, Benita, wake up, work, do something, dreams. I try to fix myself, but it feels like I'm just fixing a broken heart. Tell me, do you break a glass and then gum them and it works? It can't hold back whatever dreams. I'm still thinking. Will this work for me? It all pendants to fears. Thinking. Trusting myself has become a very difficult thing because of dreams. Dreams. Think back to dreams. We all have dreams. I know one day you might want to be a pilot somewhere, one day you might want to be a billionaire. You might want to be an actor seen on the TV. But what are my dreams? Do they all come to pass? These are the fears. And this pens down to what is crawling and holding in my mind. Do we work for this? Do we pray for this? Or do we just sit and wait for when dreams? Until then, I shall wait. Because for now, I'm still struggling with the ghosts of me that keep telling me what to do in the morning, what not to do, making me feel like I am not good enough, making me feel like I am good enough sometimes. <laughs> and when it comes, sometimes it makes me feel like I don't even know exactly what I am doing. Whereas I see myself in the future, and it's dreams, it's all dreams. Thank you. All I wanted was peace, not silence, or a situation of compromise that does not reflect my character. But he kept pushing it. Time and again, I begged you to stop. I begged him to stop for all I cared. But his emotions got the very best part of me. I pleaded. I asked questions upon questions, yet I couldn't answer. But I stayed and I watched them destroy the one thing that gave me joy. I hate that it's gone. If the gun wasn't there, maybe it will be here to narrate his own experience. But it's unfortunate my emotions did get the very best part of me. Thank you. It all started like a drop of water. 
and then develop into an ocean out of carelessness which now flows find its way to flow at any time after so many years of fighting this devil I asked myself what is this demon eating me inside what is this devil lurking inside of me taking away my happiness taking away my joy making me look like a dangerous person in the presence of human what is this demon after many years of trying I work hard to fight this demon out of me and I said to this demon I will overcome you one day but he looked back to me and said if you try to get rid of me you're gonna break yourself so I realized that the world and the people in it has broken me already and I come back to this demon because this is the only option I have but people never understand why I choose to go back and make peace with this demon. I ask myself again, what is this demon eating me up inside? And it is. It is silence. Thank you. Family is golden. As I always say, my slogan, raised with love, raised with peace, raised with happiness, filled in a home of joy. Going into the world, thinking everyone is going to be like me everyone is going to act like me everyone is going to think like me unknown to me everyone is not like me the world has the ability to awaken the monster in me that i do not know exists because I was raised with love. The monster within me, I realized emotional disconnection, emotional unavailability. The world made me create another world of my own, living by my rules, my ethics and my beliefs. The world, this world is full of lies, manipulations, insatiable wants for money, power, which made me knew that the world does not care about me, but only what it stands to gain. Everybody knows what they are doing. If I were to be given a golden chance by God to make one last wish, I wish to be able to read people's mind, you all's mind. I wish to be able to know tomorrow so you people cannot awaken my demons. My demons will be sleeping without being awakened. My toxicity is emotional disconnection. In as much as I have this monster within me, I stand with love, I stand with peace, I stand with happiness, and I implore every one of us to stand with love because it brings positivity, it brings joy, it brings happiness, it brings doors opening. Thank you.
Well, the quiet ones, they say, are the most dangerous. Um, this tale is for you to decide whether it's another action, drama, or another insidious. The monsters within. It's fair to say that these monsters didn't always exist. It wasn't in my head, neither was it under my bed. Growing up, I would say I was terrified of ghosts as a kid. But when I think of it now, I realize that I should have been more terrified of this monster within. When I picked up the pen and the paper to write this poem, it felt like I was traveling back through time. And just to find this monster and its realm. I traveled through time and I got to the year 2014. It was the year that I got into university. First time I was far from home, all alone, in the fake friend zone, trying to please people that didn't really matter. As I traveled this time machine, I watched myself make stupid decisions. That was the first time, it was then, um, these same people I tried to please in my front when they would go behind my back to bring me down. That was the first time I got a glimpse of this monster. I saw its claws, sharp teeth, and I noticed each time it got bigger. Fast forward to more recent times was in the year 2022. That was the year I pretty much lost everything. I would say I was shattered into billion pieces. Picture it this way. You're a scientist that has just built a machine that could create a clone. I created something, someone from inside me. It felt like I created another me. Every day I will live with my clone teach my clone, walk with my clone, learn with my clone. My clone had seen every part of me that it needed to see, except for one part, and that was me being vulnerable. The day I eventually slipped and showed my clone this side of me was the same day my clone stabbed me in the face. Again, like I said, I was broken. This was the first time I could see the monster in its true form. It was even uglier than I thought. Green body, balls all, all over. Think of the scariest image. The monster in quotes. I see it most clearly when I stand in the mirror. I see it as myself, the person talking to you right now. When I travel through time, I try my best to go back to amend those errors that I made at earlier stages, take back the time wasted, and try to do something about it today. Today scares me with how determined I am, how focused I am to succeed in life. I always had this within me, but I never realized it. It's fair to say that that experience brought out the monster in me. Thank you. Where do broken hearts go? This was a song done by a man who had gone through the different phases of love. Broken, deceived. He was rejected and subjected to be called diseased. But no, he stood up to his feet and pulled off his sleeves. He took his black shades and covered his eyes. The tears were dropping down from his eyes down to his cheek. Oh no, was that a black stench below his eyes? Are his eyes colored or could that be called shadows? 
Are there black lines drawing beneath his eyes or are they eyeliners? No, this could be real. The blushes on his face were like bruises from the words that came out of her lips. My love, baby, Zini, my choice, brown sugar, angel, darling. We played like kids. I wanted to have two. She said, no, we're going to have three. Two boys and a girl. And next, she took off her sleeves and said, I should take her to places where she'd never been before. I have never driven before, I replied. She took down her sleeves and said, get in and ride. My pants down, sleeves off, and I got in. The keys to my hand stretched down the hole and the car started. We drove down the boat and everything looked rosy. Oh my God, she screamed. Oh wow, I exclaimed. Never done this before. The car went on driving and driving, road dogging and moving and we ran out of fire. She pumped out the bullet from her car. The liquid went down my vines and times that I had a whole lot of blood pumping and I got my key back on and started the car. Fire hidden, the road we moved. On and on we moved to a point where we got heat. I told her I've never driven before. She stretched her hand back and brought out the mechit. There were pills. Back to the pills I got energized and kept on moving. Time ticking. She sent a message. I'm going to be out for 90 days. And I was like, long distance relationship again? We've just done 20 days and you're going to be out for 90 days. How am I going to pick up my life again? 30 days after she left, a message dropped. It's over. Boom, a new life began. It was like a story to be told, but I didn't understand where the writer came from. What am I to do? Tears dropped down my eyes. I saw myself rolling through different stages of my life again, like I had spent all my investment sending her to a beautiful makeup school where she was going to be called the Bibiana number two and I didn't know what next to do. My bank account was reading red on a red alert for all that I had spent all because of a relationship that I was going to lose in 90 days. It all went. I felt hot. Some people say it's the first love and then Omale began to sing I've been taking alcohol for the past five days. No one checked on me. I fell to my dark spot. I got drinking, I got smoking, I got humanizing, I got doing so many sort of things and that was just 27. Where is the road leading from here? I turned my back and all I could see was another man putting on same clothes with me. He called himself Donald. That was my next name. Donald looked at me to the face and told me that look at what you have done to me. Haven't you done enough? The pain, the torture, the trauma all was going through my mind and I didn't know where I could feel my pause anymore. And here I was, Pascal, looking at him and telling him that you are the one who came into my life and destroyed every part of me. You took away the best part of my life. You turned me to a drunkard. You turned me to a smoker. You took me round the world and brought me back in 20 days. What was I supposed to do? And Donald said, but you had all the world, you had everything, you enjoyed your life, you had fun, you have everything you ever asked for. Was that fun? I looked. Was that joy? I broke homes, I broke relationships, I took my friend's love, I, I did so many things. I got drinking, I got drunk, I had accidents, I almost died, I almost lost my life. You turned me into a bully, you removed my emotions, you turned me into a monster, you turned me into a gold digger. I had no feelings anymore. I had no emotions again. Haven't you done enough? I could hold my own self. But he looked at me and said, but we're together. We wear the same clothes. We have the same face. And I was like, that's the main reason why you are my monster. 
You put on my clothes, you use my face, you go out there to see people, telling them you are Pascal when you're Donald. What was I supposed to do? Donald was me, Pascal was Donald. So who was ever going to believe that Donald, the sex addict Donald, the emotionless bastard Donald, the one who cares about no one was still Pascal, the caring, the loving, the nice, the juicy, the caring, the everything every woman wanted. Who was going to believe that these two people weren't the same? I turned my back and I told Donald, straight to his face, looking at the mirror, words without missing, get behind me, Satan. Today, I found love. Today, I have a wife. Today, I am happy with my own wife. Today, I have those emotions back. Today, I am loving and caring. Today, Donald ceases to exist. Thank you. The checkup of every card that knows its strength lies in every toppings. But still was left on its own, thinking it can handle itself. Not knowing it needs all valid toppings in life. It flies away just to be seen, to be heard, loved, and even catered for. But no, you've betrayed us, the said. Why make us feel less? Why make us feel unseen by the world? Why dwindle our what? Why, 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 why? Is all I could hear in my head. Echoing in my sleep. Even in my dream. Piercing my heart. Piercing my soul. Crumbling my world. And all I could do was drown deep into my shell. And even deeper into my thoughts. Morning and night. Weeks to weeks. Months to months, year to year, I was still in my shell, trying to prove a point. What point? Of course there is no point. Steady, steady, I'm coming out of my shell to show my strength and not my weakness because a closed mouth is a closed destiny I am here to let the world know who I am you can say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Judge me. Hate me. For all I care. But do not, I repeat, do not step on the tail of a lioness. Because I I'm the checkup card. Thank you. She asked herself, 
What is that thing in her that people see and run away from? She's kind. She's accommodating. She displays herself to please others. She's just the girl who was taught how to love, respect, and cherish others. She's just the girl who wants to be happy and loved in life. But when she's been taken for granted, the monster in her comes out. She hides, she goes back to her shell, she cuts everyone away from her, but still, she sees the good in everyone. She's a shining star. She's a work in progress. She's me, Tahila. Thank you. Conceived in pain, confusion, uncertainty, bitterness, anger, and a growing rage is the constant battle between evil and good, retaliation over meekness, chaos over peace, madness over sanity that breaks free from the darkest abyss when triggered. Who only knows how to hunt without retreat? with a tongue like a dragon spitting fire, who only knows how to consume and destroy to satisfaction. But when the chaos is over, calm like a sea breeze and gentle like a dove. An overthinker who smells bullshit from a mile away and acts in defense, guarding what is most precious but retaliate with the fiercest rage that often leads to self-destruction, but pulls back to find an escape route, seeking solace and comfort in the darkest and scariest abyss, guarded by walls taller than Jericho that can't be broken by a thousand soldiers. Constantly faced with cruelty in a world of an eye for an eye, talked down on to stay down, wondered what my purpose was, <laughs> wondered what I was made for, questioned what my purpose was. Confronted by my own demons, pushed into suicidal thoughts. I tore myself to stop the pain, but I bled even more. Wallowing in anguish, teeth garnishing, and for the first time, I found a clearer purpose in that very moment of pain. Yes, I've learned to lose, but I will not accept defeat. Now, I have chosen good over evil, <laughs> meekness over retaliation, sanity over madness, solution over chaos and violence, freedom over hiding. The demon within me seeks peace. Thank you. Life, life, life. What's the value of life? Is it worth living? Love. How can I love? How can I love when the same people you love or claim to love you are the ones that take away your love and happiness? Imagine growing up as a child, being molested by the same auntie that's meant to protect you. <laughs> Every time I think about that moment, I just want to, I just want to kill her. But that's life. Good roads. quality education, that's what they tell us, but still, we 
we're still suffering. Poverty. A youth goes to university after a whole strike, after the whole troubles come out. Searching for a job like a beggar. We have the government having billions and millions of wages for one. A country where a common tax has high payment than a teacher. I don't blame you. Or would there be corruption? Or there would be stealing? Or would there be killing? The government bring out the beast in us and made us monsters within ourselves. Thank you. Any day, she's sweet. She's kind hearted. She's tender, she's confident, yet shy, harmless as a dove, she's a people pleaser, kind hearted, beautiful morning star she is, and then at night Fiona is born, brave, bold and gothic, beautiful like the moon, confident as ever, Mean. A black knight, no one ever double crosses. She doesn't take no for an answer. She's a night crawler. She's a merciless mercenary. She's a shadow hunter. She's fierce, feisty, burning like the hot furnace. She moves like the wind. Never, ever let her guard down. She's the devil's whisperer. She's the demon that locks in the dark. She's the monster that locks in the dark. She's the monster within me. Thank you. The monster within me. I never knew that I had a monster until I saw the other side of me. You never can tell that an innocent soul can heal. When light upon the sound of the drums of anger looms. Oh. <sighs> Making an innocent, innocent soul angry and loose. never can imagine that an innocent soul would go to the other side. And takes that which he used in becoming anger. Whatever that might have happened which makes him angry It takes it to the extreme, destroying, taking the pains, the torture at which he pours out, the rage at which he lets out. Ladies and gentlemen, the monster within me. 
They say we all have a monster lurking inside of us. We often ask, is this monster inside of us brave enough to speak without we ourselves speaking first? But then again, this monster is patiently waiting, gaining enough time to unleash itself into the world. And then I ask, am I really this monster? Or is there just something inside of me that is feeding the monster? I wait patiently, asking myself those questions, but I don't have an answer. <coughs> and then, I don't know what to say. The monster inside of me is the untamed pains from my past. Memories that I've lived that have shattered my life into several pieces that I now live. But then again, I ask myself, do I want to remain this way? Or do I want to let the monster inside of me become me? Those pains from my past, they feed the monster inside of me, day and night, stealing away my joy, my love, my patience, my peace, turning me into a dark person. As dark as my heart, there's a side of my heart that wants to love again. It wants to smile again. He wants to wake up every day and be so excited. <laughs> but the monster within me is locking all of them. My body, my soul, my spirit, my job, my finances. And I don't know what to do. But then again, I move because there's no going back. That monster within me becomes a man. And that man moves around me like it has kept me in bondage. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to break free. But just like the monster within, there's that tiny little voice inside of me that says, I can't do it. I should keep going. <coughs> I say you're stronger than you know. And I take my time and I listen to that tiny little voice inside of me every single day. And I take one step and another step and with each step that I've taken, smiles have come to me again. Laughter has found me again. Love has found me again. And with that tiny voice inside my head, I have listened to it with so much optimism inside of me. And I have been able to silence, <laughs> silence the monster within me. Thank you. Light and darkness do not cross the same paths. Rivers are waters, but they do not swim together. Respect, they say, is reciprocated. When an egg is cracked, its essence can be maintained. But when it gets broken, it loses all of its essence. A baby dog is your friend. You can scold it, 
beat it, or even kill it, but do not touch its tail. Growing up from nothing to something, I passed through edges of blades. I got caught, caught, parted, and caught again. These same edges, I passed to the other side just to pick up my crown. I shielded my body to be strong on the inside and soft on the outside. But no, the inquisitive you, you pierced my skin. You pierced my, my strength. You pierced my pain. These things I have covered with this beautiful makeup. I ate to bleed my fears. And now, you have brought out the monster within me. Thank you.